October 31st, and that means Halloween is here. Not quite a full moon yet, but we have a waxing gibbous moon out there tonight to help set the mood. The full moon arrives the morning of Wednesday, November 5th, and this weekend we'll be setting our clocks back, and that means the long nights are back up on us. I was just looking at the verification on Melissa, and unless I calculated this incorrectly, it appears there was some impressive performance by the AI models, Google DeepMind, and the European AIFS. Those use a deep learning pipeline to process the basic mass and thermal fields. The black line, that's the official NHC forecast. Compare that with the consensus models. They're normally the best of the best. Those did an outstanding job, but they were still beat by the AI tracks. And there's the global models. So in a ways, it seems like we're in a new era of forecasting. The old standby, the AVNO and ECMO, they're no longer the gold standard. The surface analysis for late this afternoon, and I'm not going to point out a front here, high pressure area there, and so on. I'm going to take you through this as a forecaster would see it. Now, one thing to look at is the areas of high pressure, and I think I might have missed one. Yeah, right there. High pressure area across Louisiana that connects back up with this ridge and another high in the northern U.S. So this is all an area of high pressure polar air from Canada. This is the older surge moving into the Gulf Coast area and the newer surge coming down through the Great Plains. And they're demarcated by this front in Kansas and Missouri. Another way we can tell that's cool air is the dew points. 40s, 30s across Texas, 20s up north with this fresh reinforcement. And even out in the Gulf, dew points are in the 40s and 50s. So the air mass is starting to modify as it gets over this warmer and more moist terrain. A little bit indeterminate in Texas, I analyzed two different fronts. Let me take you south. I wasn't too sure which one was the true front. This looks like the old front, which kind of stalled around Saltillo and the Mexican Plateau. But it looks like there's a warm front lifting north through Texas. Warmer conditions in the Big Bend up to Midland. And we'll see that boundary become a little active over the weekend as a short wave traverses it. And this cold front will, for the most part, undergo frontolysis as it passes through this ridge. But the western periphery will filter down the backside of this low pressure area. So all this is going to come together in Texas and produce kind of a weak, active frontal system over the weekend. The rest of the country outgoing occlusion up there in the northeastern U.S. So the cold advection pattern continues. And if you look at those thickness lines, the red dash lines, you can make out a thermal trough right in here. That's a band of very cold air, kind of like the axis of the Canadian air spilling out of Ontario. So one surge going on there, another surge into the northern plains. Then on the west coast, a new very strong front moving into the Washington coast area, another wave further down the boundary. And of course, the weather will be getting pretty active there this weekend as well. There's the forecast highs for today around the country. Cool upper 30s and 40s in the Dakotas and some more 40s up here in New York. Mild across the southern U.S. into Texas, and we still have 90s in the southwest deserts, 93 for Death Valley. There's your overnight lows for tonight. Teens from Rapid City, 13 there at, uh, what's that, Scotts Bluff, 26 at Denver, 24 at Pueblo. So a very cold night, more freezing conditions, all the way down towards Dodge City, Guymon, and Tucumcari. Lots of 30s in the eastern U.S., and mild 50s for lows across the I-5 corridor. Up at jet stream level, the 250 millibar chart shows long wave troughing across the eastern U.S., long wave ridging out west, and we have this very sharp ridge from California to Alberta. 150 knot 
polar front jet coming into Vancouver Island and British Columbia. So very stormy there. And we do have rainfall warnings and wind warnings across much of British Columbia. We have a large upper level low across the Aleutians and southern Alaska. When we see that in combination with ridging on the west coast and troughing in the eastern gulf, that is a positive PNA pattern. And that does tend to be cold across much of the U.S. east of the Rockies. So does that mean that the U.S. is going to be in the deep freeze? Well, probably not in the short term. There's our chunk of polar air coming out of Canada that's slipping to the southeast. But if you look at the temperature shading, that's very mild. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s. And further upstream, this is all southeasterly flow, so we're actually pumping up air from the mid-latitudes into western Canada, Alaska, Yukon. So that's going to be pretty mild for them. Anyway, over the weekend, you can see these Chinook winds developing in the lee of the Canadian Rockies across Alberta, so temperatures there will be above normal. As we go into next week, there is some bitterly cold air up north lurking at the top. Those are temperatures of below zero down to minus 10, minus 20 Fahrenheit, but they're pretty far north. Eventually, they will start slipping south around Monday and Tuesday and entering the Northwest Territory. So one of their first big outbreaks is going to take place early next week. That air, as you can see, is heading mostly for Hudson Bay and Ontario. So that's not very well positioned to come into the U.S. And those pressure rises back there, only 1020, 1030, that's not very impressive. But still a definite cool down in northern Canada, some areas dropping below zero all day. And as we go into Monday, November 10th, cold air is starting to settle in across this entire area. So this could be a genesis area for polar outbreaks into the U.S., maybe into the middle of the month. And look how different the picture is compared to today. See the difference? Weak ridging across western Canada 10 days from now, but right now, large area of low pressure and much warmer air. So we are heading into a pattern change over the next 10 days. Taking a look at the weather around the country in the northeastern U.S., wound up occlusion up there in Quebec. And if you check out that area around Quebec City, some very tight rotation going on. Cold air advection through New England and New York. And we outline the position of that thermal trough right through here. Within that trough, very cold conditions in the mid and upper levels and very steep lapse rates from the surface up to the mid levels. And with that, we get those bands of stratocumulus, cumulus, and even some occasional shallow cumulonimbus. I'm not sure it's unstable enough for that. Possibly, yeah, possibly up along the Canadian border. Wind advisories posted all across southern New England, most of New York into Pennsylvania, down into the mountains of West Virginia and Maryland. West winds gusting the 50 miles an hour through the overnight hours. Gale warnings are in effect all along the coast. Nothing going on in the Midwest, but we do have a gale watch in effect for Lake Superior Sunday morning through Monday night as those southwest to northwest winds pick up with the next frontal system. In the southeastern U.S., cold advection there as well. A couple of telltale signs. One is the cumuliform type clouds out there in the Appalachians, the transverse banding and so on, and also the development of streets of cumulus offshore as that very cold air picks up moisture from below. The Blue Ridge Mountains are under a freeze warning for tonight. Temperatures down to 28, including Asheville. And a frost advisory covers much of the Piedmont region into northern Alabama. That includes Birmingham, Atlanta, Greenville, Augusta, Columbia, Charlotte, Raleigh, and Goldsboro. Temperatures will fall to 32 to 35. In the Southern Plains, we're starting to get recovery of that warm air across Texas. Very dry, however, there's a strong shortwave trough moving through this region. There's the classic Bear Clinic leaf, and that is going to pick up that frontal wave that's sitting like that. Let's take a look at the upper air real quick. 
There's the 500 millibar heights and vorticity showing that short wave across the four corners. Right now, as we head into dusk, the short wave is across Albuquerque. It will be moving into West Texas and into the central part of Texas going into tomorrow morning. But also some energy on the backside ahead of this ridge that's upstream. This is a jet max that is descending through Colorado into the Panhandles. And we have this divergent left front quadrant. So a lot of lift coming together across Texas. The only thing is it's very dry. So that will counteract what would normally be strong frontal development. But we will have a frontal wave moving through Texas and into the Gulf. There it will likely pick up some moisture and undergo a little bit further development. And we'll look at that on the surface charts a little bit later. In the Northern Plains, a vortex associated with a little surge of cold advection back behind that front. There's a freeze watch for tomorrow night for the Eastern tier counties of Kansas into much of Missouri, including Kansas City and St. Louis into Southern Illinois near Carbondale and Vandalia. Further west, a high wind warning in effect for the foothills of Glacier National Park way up here. They're expecting southwest winds gusting at 70 miles an hour late tonight, Saturday, and most of Sunday, especially Saturday night and a Sunday. All of central Montana, Shelby, Great Falls, Hoover, and northern Stillwater County under a high wind watch Sunday for west winds gusting to 60 miles an hour. In the southwestern U.S., no significant weather, dry northwesterly flow, but we do have this short wave. Let's uh, take a look at that on the water vapor imagery because sometimes that is interesting. And yes, there it is. The exact position of that short wave, we'll let it run up to the end. And that's going to be basically right here. And that's what you're going to analyze on the model output. And there's the Pacific Northwest large frontal system. Most of this is the warm conveyor belt. The cold advection is further to the west out over the North Pacific. We have a wind advisory east of the Cascades Saturday afternoon and evening from about Bend up to Pendleton and Kennewick for southwest winds gusting the 50 miles an hour. Further west, the Oregon and Washington beaches will be hazardous over the weekend due to 25 foot breakers rip currents, and sneaker waves. Puget Sound under a gale warning until 10 p.m. tonight. Heading out into the Pacific and up to Alaska, we definitely cross into the cold polar air. There's a thermal trough. Lots of cold air surging into the Pacific Northwest on its way. Alaska is under the influence of this very broad Gulf of Alaska low occluded front all the way up towards the Brooks Range and some areas of snow through the regions north of Fairbanks. High wind warnings are in effect along the northwest coast from St. Lawrence Island up to Point Hope Point Lay in western Seward Peninsula. You can see those sustained winds about 30 knots. This is due to that very tight gradient around that low pressure area. A winter weather advisory is in effect in parts of the Dalton Highway near the Brooks Range. Further to the east in the Yukon area, a blizzard warning is in effect for the Dempster Highway north of Dawson. That's very common this time of year when there's a pressure gradient and a little moisture. Wind warning is in effect across western Victoria Island right there at Ulukaktuk, where winds to 55 miles an hour will develop tonight and Saturday. In British Columbia, those rainfall warnings and wind warnings we were talking about, focusing on that area right there, we'll see those Chinook winds developing in Alberta. Pretty quiet through the central part of Canada. And then, of course, we pick up that occlusion moving into Quebec. We've got an assortment of rainfall warnings all the way from the St. Lawrence Valley up to the Gulf of St. Lawrence. And we have snowfall warnings for the Goose Bay area of Labrador. They're expecting six to eight inches of snow on Saturday. From the hurricane desk, a little bit of good news, nothing in the tropics. That is typical of November, although we have had our share of November hurricanes, such as Kate, the 1932 Cuba hurricane, Paloma, Greta, 
Iota, Mitch, and so on. The GFS forecast in the tropics shows one easterly wave getting picked up by the prevailing westerlies. Pretty quiet through the remainder of next week. And then as we go into November 9th and 10th, a little bit of increased shear out there in the Venezuela area. But really, under the influence of mostly these modifying polar air masses, so not very conducive towards hurricane formation. So let us take a look at that surface map starting with tonight. We'll see a little bit of development there in Texas as that shortwave and jet max pick up that boundary. And eventually that's going to move into the Gulf later Saturday into Sunday and undergo a little bit of development out there in the warmer, moister environment. New frontal system moving into the northwestern U.S. that's going to cross the Rockies Sunday and then emerge into the northern plains. So that looks like uh, it's not going to do very much for most of the country. We'll keep watching out to the west for next week. Here comes another strong one onto the west coast for Wednesday. Meanwhile, this other system sneaks eastward across the Midwest into the northeastern U.S. And we have a repeat in the northern plains for Thursday and Friday. A little bit more push of cold air southward for late next week. And then we have another system moving across the northern U.S. for November 9th and 10th. And this is where we're going to involve some of that cooler air up north from Canada. So we get a little bit more coverage of that snow down into the central Rockies. And that will be all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Remember, Saturday night, set your clocks back. Hope you have a great weekend, and remember, your Patreon support is essential. Take care, and we'll see you next week, Monday for the supporters, and Tuesday for everybody else. Bye-bye.